wealth and power will sometimes trump the justice system. And Mason knows there's a greater, darker force behind the Gerda brothers. He really sees the reach of the powerful in Los Angeles through this case. Brooks was into something big, bigger than you or anyone in this town's even thinking about. Los Angeles in the first three decades of the 20th century does have an oligarchic structure. There are a small number of people who can wield extraordinary power. So it's this place we associate with corruption at the city hall level, at the city council level. Councilman V. Taylor. District 7, McCutcheon Stadium. I used to be our neighborhood. It's classic Mason where he just goes, something is off. We need to bring Councilman Taylor down. Councilman Taylor, when were you first introduced to Brooks McCutcheon? Can't say exactly. There's a rough edge to Mason in the way he presents the case. Perry's presence in that moment, being a man presenting that information, is not the best thing. Excuse me, counselor, a word? Stella realizes that she's the only person equipped to take down Councilman Taylor. I think I should finish questioning Taylor. It's the first time in the season that a woman will do it better than a man in that moment. You sure? Mm -hmm. Perry fully understands Della should have the big Perry Mason moment. It was one of the most electrifying days on set by far. You can just feel the tension in everybody in that courtroom. He would put his belt around the woman's neck, which was your sister's case, wasn't it? Juliet nailed it. I think she brought perfection to Della having confidence, but a little bit of fear. I've watched Matthew stand up in that courtroom again and again. He makes it look so easy. And the minute you stand up yourself, you go, oh God, this is quite terrifying. This line of questioning humiliates a productive member of this city. Him or you? I think Mr. Mason's rubbing off on you too much. As independent and incredibly intelligent Della is, there is things about Perry that she's learned from. Did you ask them where they were headed? Did they just say, oh, we're off to go Brooks McCutcheon? Objection, compound, argumentative. I don't remember. Like you didn't remember, Brooks strangled your sister. Objection! That journey between Perry and Della is really exciting. They really begin the season so fractured. And that scene in episode six exemplifies the trust that is built between them over the course of the story. I'm by. <laughs> We can't lose. Man, you saw the jury's faces. We're going home, brother. We don't often see Latino lives reflected on the screen. And here was a show that was willing to talk about those lives in their full dimensions. The struggles they face, the bonds between the family members. No, no, no. Hablaré yo con Rafa. Language like communities are complex. So we've tried to come up with phrases, ways of speaking that are as authentic as possible. Luisa, has everyone in the shanty praying to the Santo Niño de Atocha 10 times a day? The Santo Niño de Atocha is my grandmother's favorite saint. I tried to get in some things that were particular to my family, my community. It's great to know all the research so that you could really tell the human story in the midst of it. Oh, please. They came in like stampeding bulls, not giving a shit what they stomped on. There is a scene in which the Gallardos are being evicted. It is trying to evoke the real Chavez Ravine evictions, a really dark period for the Latino community. Chavez Ravine was a community in the Elysian Park area where Dodger Stadium sits now. It's really interesting for an audience to get an opportunity in a single show to have windows into all of those worlds. Aw, you know Effie Harris from down the street? Mm -hmm. Hell, she can't even walk with them little chicken legs she got, let alone dance. Clara and Paul are like ride or die before ride or die was a thing. And I think Paul throughout this season forgets that a lot. Hey, where you getting them shoes? I'm out of me. Paul, I'm not tall. What, Claire? What is the matter with you? Hey, hey, how do you tell the person you love you almost killed somebody? The idea of that scene came from what are the, like sort of the moral limits of Paul? How far will he go to do what's right? I ain't got nothing to do with this. It pushes him farther than his moral compass is comfortable with. We ain't leaving. 
until you get a full confession and he atoned for his sin. In my mind, where that scene started was Marathon Man. Dustin Hoffman is in the chair, and Laurence Olivier is gonna pull his teeth out. It's just such an awful moment that you can't erase. And so how do you share that with your wife? I beat up someone who looks just like us. So let's just get back in line. With season two, many of our characters are pushed to make choices, and then they have to live with the results of those choices. I have incredible and newly discovered information that Mr. Mason is actively concealing the murder weapon in his private safe at his office. It's such a roller coaster, the fact that we have this glorious moment in episode six where we think we've done it. Look what you just did to Vincent Taylor. We gotta keep going. And then immediately afterwards, we're thrown into complete chaos. Legally, the defense cannot remove the murder weapon from its location and not tell the prosecution. And so this is not only a massive blow to the case, but to Perry, everything comes tumbling down again. Do you talk to Anita about work? Because he has all that cynicism inside of him, he is looking for who could possibly betray him in this moment. He doesn't want to emotionally accept that he is the one responsible. Was it you? Was what me? Mason has dealt with a number of betrayals. We saw it in season one with Lupe, the land and the taxes. It's made him wary of people. Dalla and I were talking, what did you overhear? We spent a lot of time talking about masculinity in this period and men just, they didn't talk about their feelings. Perry's cynicism is really an extension of his own inability to express himself. Don't play dumb with me, because if I find out you're lying, you'll do what? All those things lead him down the wrong path. He's gonna struggle with that, and he's gonna wonder, is this all worth it? Does he have what it takes to do this? Now what? What's it gonna take to keep the trial going? I want you both in my chambers tomorrow morning. Let me know if you need the name of a good public defender.